Hi, Pastor Steve, along with Pastor Jose Lebron, we're here to welcome you to the weekly Bible study as we move into the third Sunday of Easter, which will be the 23rd of April. Good morning, Jose. Good morning to you, Buenos Steve, dias. and everybody. Buenos dias. Yeah. We're recording this on Thursday morning, and uh, the text, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about the introduction of these texts. It says, today's gospel, which is from Luke 24, begins with two disciples walking to Emmaus, overcome with sadness, loss, and disappointment. They had hoped Jesus, who was crucified, would be the one to redeem Israel. And yet, the risen Christ walks with them and then opens their eyes to the, on the, in the breaking of the bread. And uh, so we're going to talk about that, uh, how that applies to our lives together each Sunday. Uh, the other uh, texts are from Acts chapter 2. This is really the end of the uh, kind of Pentecost sermon from Peter. Uh, Acts chapter 2, you can see it on the screen. And then the psalm is Psalm 116. We were just talking about this, Jose, how this yes. psalm yeah, this has been morning. incorporated into parts of the liturgy of the church. A prayer. Yeah. First Peter chapter 1, uh, born anew through the living word of God. But I think what we're going to really con concentrate on as we preach is this marvelous story in Luke chapter 24, uh, eating with the risen Christ, the, the story of the these two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And this is a unique story that's found only in Luke. It is a unique story, yeah. An amazing one, yes. Uh, uh, yesterday, on Monday evening, teaching the, the lectionary with some people from ECC, we just read the gospel. But they always follow immediately after reading this gospel. It, it comes uh, my question. What do you think it was the most appealing verse in this narrative or something? Uh, most of the people, I would say 90%, they go for the verse that says uh, their eyes were open right after Jesus yeah, blessed the bread and wine. But only one person told me, well, Pastor, it calls my attention uh, verse 16, when it says, but they were kept from recognizing him. Uh -huh. And immediately my question, why? <laughs> and that person, it was amazing when he told me, Pastor, it's because many, many times in our lives, at least from my, my own experience, he was talking, uh, Jesus has been by my side and I was being able to recognize him. Well, you know, it's Jose, here, let's do this. Let, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the story. You and I can hear it again. Okay. Because what you're talking about is this stranger that they thought was on the road with them. Yes. Now, if you haven't heard the story, just turn to chapter 24 of Luke, and I'll just read it quickly. There we go, please. Uh, verses 13 <laughs> through 35, and then as we hear it, we'll, we'll reflect. Now, on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, Two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came, came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. And then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. 
Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So they went in, he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. You know, Jose, it is an amazing story. There was there was this sermon I heard years ago. It was entitled "The Stranger." The Stranger. You know, because this is a this is a unique story. Yeah. These two disciples, one of them is named Cleopas, I guess, mm -hmm. but it's it's on the eve of the resurrection, mm -hmm. and they're walking along, right? And this man appears, and this this is always a puzzler because Jesus' resurrection appearances, and yet uh, sometimes they did recognize him, and other times they did not. Mm -hmm. But that's a theme. That is the question that uh, I pose immediately when I heard that this uh, brother in Christ uh, said to me yesterday, uh, Pastor, what? I, 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 I was stroke that they didn't recognize Jesus Christ. But my question was, what things are in our lives that prevent us to recognize Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the things that, I don't know, distract us or, I don't know, make us blind? Yeah, we have, to a, see we have, a, lot of, we have a lot of preconceptions. Us. You know, I, last Sunday, Jose, we had an adult form and we were talking about the resurrection of the body. Mm -hmm. And, of course, how mysterious this is. And a lot of people want to know exactly what that is in terms of the specifics. But when you go into the Gospels and you find uh, at the end of each one of them, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have some different versions of this resurrection Absolutely. story. Absolutely, everyone. And then, of course, uh, and then of course uh, by the time you get into 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where Paul writes about the resurrection, about how he appeared to Peter and all the mm -hmm. disciples and 500. And then he, last of all, he says he appeared unto me, the, uh, who is Saul, who became the Apostle Paul. Um, it is, we, we had some fun with it last week because I started the class by saying, uh, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians is the resurrection chapter. The resurrection. Behold, I tell you a mystery. And it, it is still still a mystery to this day. It is. Uh, and I guess kind of a blessed mystery that we don't always have mm -hmm. to know all the answers. Absolutely right. Yes. It's, a, it's a still a mystery. Yeah. And I believe only we will find out the day when we just uh, pass away. And then, yeah, literally we will be resurrected with Jesus Christ. Well, what a difference it can make in our lives, even in the present day, if we recognize the presence of Christ. Um, I've always said it's been helpful to me to realize that when the body of Christ, meaning the people of God, come together, even on a Sunday morning, there's, there's an ability to recognize the holy presence of God within that community amidst all of our imperfections. Mm -hmm. um, just think for centuries, people have been gathering in the name of Christ breaking the bread right. around the table of Holy Communion, and in that regard saying that something is revealed to us about who Jesus is. What would, what would you say to a person that goes to Holy Communion and receives that? What gift do they receive? Well, <laughs> they, they, the gift they receive is believing in Jesus Christ. And uh, always I refer to the, the uh, Eucharistic 
This is the thing at the time that Jesus yeah, chose to give us something that we can touch and we can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the bread and the wine. and Because, yeah, in the gospel, remember last Sunday that Jesus says, Blessed are the ones. Well, uh, I, I will re refrain again. In, in front, specifically in front of Thomas. Thomas, because Thomas. you see me. Yeah, now you believe, blessed. Blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe. Yeah. So it, it, is, it is a gift, a gift of faith. It's a, a gift of hope. I don't know. It's a lot of stuff. Well, we, when you said Thomas seems to be a voice of kind of every person. Every person. I Absolutely. won't believe it unless I see unless it Unless I see it. And then Jesus, of course, appears to him and, and not only gives him a chance to he encounter... He invited. He challenged. In, him. Which says something yeah. about the resurrected body. Yes. But, but then, as you said, he said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's yes, really what the Gospel of John is about. It is. You know, the other thing, too, about Holy Communion, I was told, I, you probably remember this from seminary, too, the, the purity of the Gospel is in those words, for you. For you. Given and shed for Given you. Shed. For the forgiveness of sins, yes. the renewal of your life. And that's why every time when we have Holy Communion, I hope it gets personal for people. It is. It is a communal thing that has to be shared with everyone. But at the same time, it is very personal. Because when you, uh, uh, it depends on the attitude with uh, you approach yeah, to the things. Always I'm appealing to that. Please come and receive Jesus. Jesus, yes, he comes here to you now. And uh, if you are sick and you believe that you can be healed, I believe that people can be healed. Yeah, yeah at, at that moment and uh, or later, whatever. Yeah, God wants. Well, in your experience as a pastor through the years, when you've actually kind of introduced Christ to people who had never heard the story before, do you remember any of the reactions that people had in hearing a story like this for the first time? Well, I, I've been seeing all kinds of reactions. Yeah. People believing in some others. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Tell me more. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've, <laughs> yes. I've had some people who have, you know, basically it's kind of this, because we talk about this, uh, this um, immeasurable love. Uh, I've said sometimes uh, you can't stop God from loving you. But sometimes people have had the reaction, what, who, if, if, if God only knew something more about me, maybe God wouldn't love me. But it's just fascinating to know that, as we say, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. We're all sinful people. Yes. And for people to encounter that pure purity of love through Christ for the first time can be life-changing. Absolutely. Uh, even, yeah, when we read... The second reading about uh, that uh, Peter, mm -hmm. Peter is talking about yeah, uh, born again, yeah, yeah, through the faith and uh, all the things. I don't know exactly yeah what uh, verse is, but uh, Peter referred to to us that is this faith that led us yeah to salvation, yeah, and rejoicing. Yeah. Salvation. There's this beautiful phrase in verse 21 says, Through him, Christ, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Your faith and hope are set on God. Yeah. You know, in the, the it, it would have been interesting to be a part of that early church uh, in those, those first days when the <laughs> Christians were just a few. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he, it's kind of remarkable in that in the first lessons for Sunday from the book of Acts, there is this story about uh, Peter's, Peter's preaching. Now, Jose, imagine if you preached a sermon and 3,000 people believed all at once. Wow. <laughs> this is amazing, yeah. Always I, I celebrate that, that uh, the birth of the church, immediately the church yeah, became a mega church. <laughs> Always I refer <laughs> But thank God. But I believe, even though the number is greater, there were other people that didn't believe. Yeah, yeah. So in this world, we have everything, all kind of answer. The person who are receptive and open their uh, hearts and their eyes 
are open, as it happened here with these two disciples. Just at the breaking of bread, when he gave thanks, their eyes are, were open. It, this is amazing. And I love that they weren't passive. They were active. Immediately mm -hmm. this happened and Jesus yeah. vanishes. What do we have here in this narrative? They got up and they say, let's go back. Yeah. Let's return where the assembly is gathering. Mm -hmm. Let's go. And what they found, the disciples praying and talking about the risen Christ. And if you follow the, this narrative, it's amazing. Jesus appears again mm -hmm. to all of them and says, Shalom, Shalom. Hey, I know it goes. Yeah, peace be with you. And then, hey, don't be fear. I know a ghost. And to prove that he's not a ghost, he asks yeah, for food and drink. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Saying, I don't know. It's for us to, to keep our faith and our hearts burning. Yeah. As they describe too. Uh, you know, Jose, there, there are 50 days of Easter rejoicing in the liturgical year. We, we rejoice for mm -hmm. 50 days. But every Sunday is what we call a little Easter. Yes. throughout the year because yes. we always celebrate the resurrection always of Christ. we celebrate hey listen i forgot to pray at the beginning here <laughs> uh pray for people to be with us in this uh, the hearing and the understanding of these texts would you would you conclude by uh, sharing a prayer with this community gathered today it is my pleasure the lord be with you and also with you heavenly father we just come to you humbly giving you thanks oh lord because sometimes we are the, as uh, these two guys, yeah, <laughs> on the road of Emmaus. I don't know, with too many problems, too many things, too many distractions in our heads that prevent us to see you, that you are by our side, O oh Lord. But thank you, O oh Lord, because you have been patient and loving Father, O oh Lord, with us. And sooner or later, O oh Lord, you open our eyes, you open our ears for us to see and to hear you, O oh Lord. And we give you thanks, O oh Lord, because every Sunday we can rejoice after listening these wonderful readings, O oh Lord, in our eyes. If we are so distracted that we cannot see, we then we see. And also, as if we'll be just a little, always you give us more when we have the privilege to have the bread and wine every Sunday, O oh Lord. And everybody, everybody's included in your love, in your goodness. O oh Lord, thank you, O oh Lord, and bless the people who uh, listen to this podcast, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Well, as we, well, as we say, he is risen. He is risen. risen indeed. He is risen indeed. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Enjoy your uh, week ahead, and we'll see you again, hopefully, at Emmanuel Lutheran Church Amen. this coming Sunday. God bless you all.